I'm excited. This is a very uh, sensitive topic and um, I'm happy to be here with you. I'm also thanking you all that you came. Uh, my name is Lilian Petri. I live in Germany. I'm seeing people from Sweden, from from everywhere. And um, I've been in Germany since 2000. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother. I'm HIV positive. I'm the coordinator for Afro 11 Plus. That is the, the community of HIV positive people in the whole of Germany. I'm also the face of HIV. We, uh, we uh, have a, a group which is elected by the HIV positive community. And um, I'm one of the, uh, the face of the face of HIV. So I'm also a founder of a women group called Starke Frauen, Strong Women, HIV positive women and their children. We support each other on a peer to peer group. So, and um, I train also sometimes at CT. So we are also a network of African um, organizations of Africans living in Germany who also do prevention. We have a network, it's called Agnid African Gesundheits High Power Network in Germany. That all the African organizations which are here because they are connected directly to their people, they do HIV prevention with us. So we have an, over 20 organizations which are directly involved. So in the what I also would also do in HIV area is um, prevention in the churches. We have a network of pastors, African churches who also learn about HIV and prevention, and they apply their knowledge in the churches. So because the church is the place and many people go to churches and the people easily when you are a pastor because they trust the pastors and they tell pastors their, their worries. And that's why this program is working very well. It's called Dein Gesundheit and Glauben. It's called Your Health and Your Faith. It's a project which has been sponsored by the German AIDS Help, and it's really working well. We get access to people. so that is my involvement story. And I would like to to tell everyone now to just stand up, get a glass of water, a cup of tea, uh, use the toilet, fill the floor. Then we are back in three minutes. Then we can start our presentation. You're welcome. I hope we are all back. You have a comfortable chair and a seat and a drink. As I was introducing myself, I had told you my experiences and I will try to be using my personal experiences and the experiences of the women 
to, to go through this session today. Um, living with HIV and barriers facing healthcare in Germany. We, we're trying to stay in Germany because this is where our main work is. And later, as Ariana told you, we shall exchange with other people from other countries. They will, they will, after the presentation, they will add up the information and their contribution. Um, there is, uh, in the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, we promised or they promised the world that the epidemics of AIDS Can you see the presentation? Is it is the mouse working? Okay. We can we promise see the world the that by twenty thirty, the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and other neglected tropical diseases, and they are combating of hepatitis, waterborne diseases, and other communicable diseases should end by twenty thirty. That is supposed to be a goal. And um, that goal number three says good health and well being for all. The aim is that every human being living on earth without location should be free of these weaknesses by 2030. And maybe at the end, we shall agree if it's possible or not, because we already have 2024. This should happen in six years. So we have maybe to ask the United Nations six years what happened to this program. And um, we have the current situation of HIV called the U equals U. In German, it's called N gleich N, undetectable equals untransmittable. That HIV medications prevent HIV transmission, whereby HIV medications suppress the reproduction of HIV in the body. And thus, um, they enable a long, good life. Like I live, I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, and I, I take my RVs, and uh, I always have my solution with me. And this can work, or this really works. It has been scientifically proved that after a while, the virus can no longer be detected in the blood and can also not be transmitted, even during. So this information which says HIV cannot be transmitted in everyday life at work, at sport, has been here for some time now, and many people are celebrating the U equals U. So we, we are happy to have this good news, and we want this good news to be known. Today we are 12 people. Maybe if each one of you can tell 20 people, then the, the good news of U equals U will be distributed. Around 10% of the people in Germany know about this and cannot, which HIV cannot be transmitted under treatment. This information is a huge relief for people living with HIV and our partners. Lilian, um, yeah? just a second, but we still see just the first slide. You can see only the first slide. Yes. yes. Wait a moment, thank you. You can see this? We're not moving, we're stuck at the title slide. What can you see now? Just the title slide. Living with HIV. Yeah. Yes. And now? No. You don't see any other slides? No, we can see them on the side, but um, we're not uh, moving as you're changing slide. Oh, is that a technical problem? Wait, let me go back. What can you see now? Still the title. We're going to get there. Going to get that. Yeah. What do you see now? No, it's the same. Maybe you can try and like get out of a uh, sharing mode and then uh, screen share again and see if it reset so then maybe that helps so i'm out of the screen sharing so we go back to the screen sharing right cover uh, what do you see now oh 
perfect. Now we can see the slide uh, u equal u. And try and change it just to check if it works. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. What do you see now? Perfect. Now it works uh, great. All right. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this is where we were at the um, SDG3, good health and well-being. And um, we finished that one. We came to the next slide of the undetectables that HIV cannot be transmitted in everyday life. And uh, we were here that the information should go around. So the U equals U message helps to reduce unfounded fears of transmission. In our communities, when we got this, this message, many people were not really um, believing that this can work, but many people in the time, in the last 15 years, struggling to have children and with you because you people get married also to negative partners, people have children, people breastfeed, and it's really a breakthrough for the HIV community. We can say if the information, we can trust that if this information reaches everybody, the rates of discrimination would reduce, but it's really not known. And even some don't know this. You go to dentists and you find they don't know, they still have the fears, the unfounded fears. So the knowledge contributes to reducing rejection and discrimination and gives space for equality, freedom, and justice for us who live with HIV and have the same rights of living a healthy and fulfilling life. So um, now we say that the, the SDG is promised 2030 and we have now U equals U. What about the migrants in Germany? Does this also apply to them? Are they also having hope that 2030 they will be also covered? Because some areas of the world, I come from Uganda, and I support a, a small community where children live with HIV with their mothers. And I notice how complicated it is for them even to start treatment, which is here in Germany, like normal, that everybody should be able to get it. Because in Germany, we have medicine as a human right. Everybody is entitled to have therapy. But migrants in Germany, people of, um, non-German, I mean people who also don't have a German passport because you could be here and you live here and you have a German passport and you have access. So people of non-German origin living in Germany have care opportunities and limited access to medical care generally without HIV even because of some of the reasons. Uh, we have very low social positions such that our um, education systems are not fitting on German. If you are, for example, a doctor in Uganda, you are not a doctor in Germany. So you end up getting less money, less paid, and the chances of working and getting a good paid job is, is limited. We have language barriers. Uh, German, main language is, do, is German. To come here, to live here, you have German. And German is not one of those easiest languages. The Germans who are here, I think, can confirm that their language is not easy. So, and when we go to, to foreigners, when we come here, there's a language called, called an integration course. It takes six months. And in six months, you have to learn to read and write German and get a certificate of level B1, which is not really easy for everybody. So we have cultural barriers. Um, our cultures uh, are different. We, we are uh, different people, diversity coming from all over the world. And our cultures are also not the same in re reference to medical care or health care. For example, we have in Germany a health system with a Gesundheitsamt, and we don't have this everywhere in the world. People go to doctors, they have hospitals, and the structures are different, and the cultures and the faith and the beliefs. Some people don't believe in modern medicine, and this becomes also another barrier. So we have problems caused by the foreign law. It's a problem in Germany that um, our health system is connected to to the right to stay. If you don't have a right to stay, a visa to stay in this country, it's very hard to access medical care. Even if there are some organizations like the Diaconie, which deals with people who don't have uh, medical care and insurance, as a migrant, it's not also. A and then we have discrimination and racism, which has also been proved in the last years that um, there's a lot of racism also in the medical system that uh, our skin example, our children are also being already racist, experiencing racism because of skin color racism, access to medication or to some services where the rules are not including black people. And um, 
we are we started a campaign now with a Dolce Aid Silver, which is working well to see that we fail, that we call it by name and we are doing a lot of trainings and talking about racism. And the Dolce Aid Silver has also said in the position paper to, to say we are really in support that we fight against racism. So, but migrants living with HIV in Germany have on top of the other general problems, they have also HIV. Migrants suffer uh, more often from physical illnesses and psychotraumatic complaints because of the following. So we are trying to see people who are not having chronic diseases, and now we are coming to the HIV positive people. If first, Ariana, you, you step to you tap on me, please. <laughs> because I'm feeling like oh, we have to go through this and we have only two and a half hours. So we're living in socially disadvantaged areas. Um, where I come from, you could call it like ghettos. The areas where people get houses, affordable houses, are not very, um, very, very nice for families. We also still have an old system of asylum houses. When people come here, they don't have papers. They live in camps. So like so many people sharing toilets and kitchens and not the rest of the world. So these cramped living conditions also increase the area of infection. We proved it in the time of Corona, when COVID came, that people who were living in these closed communities had high rates of infection with under each other. And um, we have also poor nutrition due to low incomes. And um, it's hard to say that we still have poverty here. In Germany now, they have been hard in some areas. If you don't have a, a, a right to stay, then you get a card. With this card, you can buy only food in specific shops. So um, many people, especially Africans, we have extra shops, shops where we buy the food that we know that our bodies are used to. So if you don't have access to the income and you cannot work because of the papers, you cannot buy the food you really know or we want to eat. And this nutrition problem uh, adds also the HIV sickness because we, we are fighting for our immunity. We need to eat good food. We have to have access to food. So hard, psychological, hard psycho, physical work or frustration due to legally enforced unemployment for asylum seekers. Physical work, like uh, um, I can give an example of now doctors who came here from Ukraine because they didn't have access. The war came and they came here. Many people from Ukraine are in the system and the African people who are from Ukraine also Many of them are doing hard labor jobs, um, working in chocolate companies because they, are, they, are, they can't be doctors. They can't continue in the system. They don't have the right to stay. So, and they are doing that same work, which people who came also from uh, asylum or who don't have qualifications are doing. This is very frustrating. And it's in the law that they just come here and stay here and get a right to stay and enter the medical system because of the political situations. So we have feelings of isolation also in the community because HIV is not yet so a topic in the, also in the migrant communities, you cannot just be accepted as an HIV positive community. So it's hard work, it's sensitization. We are talking about this and some of us who have our faces out, we try to talk to people to explain that um, we can live with HIV positive people without risks so that people don't live in isolation. So, and then experiencing of discrimination within their own families and own friends. And we also have loss of homes. When you come here and you live here, you have rights to go back home, you miss your home. It's also a, a, a very big impact on our health that people are lonely and they also miss their homes. So the taboo surrounding HIV is a disaster because many people hide their positive status, uh, these results were not even going for a test. Many people are here, even the access to tests would be here. It's not very easy for everybody to go for an HIV test because you, you, you become uncertain. You don't know what happens after the test. When we came here around 2000, the HIV test was for every asylum seeker. And now it's no longer a must. I think in Bayern, they're still doing the test, the first test but some other areas of Germany, you go for an HIV test, you have to agree freely to do it. So if people do not know about their infection, they can unknowingly pass the virus onto others and won't be able to use the available treatment options. So 
how to encourage people to know their status is very, very challenging. Because even us who have given our status, we are still experiencing a lot of discrimination and and and, and um, isolation. And people think, oh, if I test, I'm going to experience the same. So we have late presenting because many migrants only go to the doctor or seek help when they are already seriously ill and sometimes even refuse to take an HIV test. However, the time the doctor can treat them, it's late. We, we, we see symptoms. We wait for symptoms. And that's why our program with the, the faith and the health, we also have doctors, Dr. Mawan, I thank her for coming. She also, she's a doctor who teaches also pastors and trains them about the symptoms. If they see a church member with these symptoms, what they should do or wh where they should also report. So Ariana, are you still seeing the screen? Am I sliding? Am I? Yeah, everything correctly. Okay. So we have also confrontation with foreign medicine. I come for example, place where we have natural medicine. We still use natural medicine and I love it when I go home that I can also go and use these herbs and grass and, and the majority of the world's population does not have access to scientifically based medication. Even like when the corona immunization came, it wasn't access to everybody. So we know that there are limits to accessibility of human rights and, and medication in the whole world. And that is not also leaving out HIV medication. So we have a barrier to access this medication. So people use still use their herbal medication. So National Organization for Migration estimated in 2022, I don't know if there's current new information, that 3.6% of the world population are migrants. That means if 3.6% of the whole world are not having access to medical care, then we have a problem. Around 281 million people live outside the region in which they are, they are born. It, it's not only in Europe, some people are in other areas, other continents. And when we are, we are having our uh, confrontation with a foreign medication, it is, um, it is a, it's not financed, first of all, to do this work. There is no money invested in clearing this problem. So people are really left alone. So these are largely migrants from, um, we call it Sub-Sahara, so Southern countries who are, and have to come to USA or Europe to live here and uh, have to switch to traditions, to scientific medication. This is also a challenge for some people. Uh, for example, when I came here, I noticed that um, when people have fever, they don't get an injection. And I was raised up, if I don't have an injection, I don't even feel like I saw a doctor. I, I, I always needed an injection to know that the doctor has treated me. I took time to get away from the injection. I, I felt like I would go sick and they would give me small tablets and I felt like I needed an injection. Mentally, I needed to have a, a, an injection in my body to know that I'm being treated. So that is a mind, a mind which people, many people still have. So this change is associated with a revision of the fundamental beliefs that affect the image of man and his place in the world. Everybody has their own upbringing and their own um, things which we are used to. And when we come here to this modern medication, we, I also, communities, we see with the immunization of the children. It's also very hard that some women don't want to take their children for immunization. So this is also not leaving the HIV world out. We still have these problems. So um, when you are an asylum seeker, then you have also multiple discrimination. First, living as an asylum seeker, um, the identity is like uh, you're no longer came through the asylum process. I'm happy to be talking about things which I've also experienced, that the identity you are here as an asylum seeker, you get into a drawer and you start functioning as an asylum seeker. So when you are HIV positive, often you come from countries which don't have access to medical care. So the normal other people who don't have HIV also have a fear of deportation. And when you are HIV positive, you have a fear of deportation in a country which you don't have medication. Now I have my right to go and live in Uganda and come back. But sometimes I'm thinking if I live in Uganda for some time, will I get the access to medication, even if I have money? There are some times when you have the money and you still don't have the access to get the medication because the, medica the uh, HIV medication and many other health services are being distributed politically. And before Africa as a continent gets medication, there's always a lot of uh, 
problems which so living in in cramped communal accommodation or like containers we had demonstrations two years ago that asylum seekers were living in containers and many people tried even now it's not solved but many people are living in containers uh, metal containers and when you're hiv positive you need also this space where you can hide your medication and you're sharing your container with two or three or four people the fear of being discovered and discriminated against as an hiv positive person the container accommodation is is a big challenge so pet nutrition i've already talked about it uh, we used to have food packets and uh, you get a carton you open it and you find inside the food which you're supposed to get for that time now we have the cards and uh, which which can also cause particular damage to the immune system of an hiv affected person if they don't have nutrition because food is uh, food is health yeah and um, hiv and the law of foreigners so if the asylum application is rejected in the case of hiv positive people even if there are no treatment options in their home countries there's deportation hiv positive people are still being deported deported despite the countries not having facilities and uh, some they do humanitarian grounds application you have to have a good lawyer you have to have a very high virus load you must be in a risk to to get that stay of paragraph called paragraph 25 of human health uh, humanitarian help that you can stay in germany because of hiv but it's not in that well it is possible to treat hiv as to assert exceptional hardship and toleration of humanitarian grounds but even in this case they are often similar to asylum seekers only limited health services and medical care generally so um migrants with hiv in german um we have special support service providers for migrants with hiv they are still in short supply we can't say they are accessible not yet and um many migrants are reluctant to seek help because of some of some of these reasons we fear discrimination also because of bad experiences hiv is still a taboo topic the fear of being recognized as infected especially by one's own community because anyone who is excluded excluded they are falls out of the community benefits we have barriers for example when people know that the person died of hiv we had somebody <laughs> die here and people feared to go for burial that they they would be infected so the frequent that aids service providers are gay facilities and the taboo word of aids sets the inhabitation threshold it is a big barrier and creates tension i come from uganda and uganda happens to be one of those countries our community is not yet um, ready to live in a gay atmosphere so it's general in many african or migrant communities that with a gay structure we cannot all function and some people need time to be able to to access the services of the service provider of the um, doche aids helper so um this leaves, leaves leaves out people many people do that we have very good programs every wednesday we have positive cafe that is coffee for hiv positive people we have our our poor bear positive meetings but many people are still having these barriers of homophobic um, trainings and racism training that the community cannot yet be together so that is also um, a problem in our communities so the fear that all state institutions are the same uh, perceived as as threatening and for asylum seekers for example they are really threatening we we, I, I uh, take people to immunization, for example, or help people to translate for them. So when we go to the diaconie, there are people who don't have papers. They, they call it in German, Optak Lose. And people fear that these doctors at diaconie may call police for them. So after one of those um, visitings, I went there with a lady, the, a fire burned, for example, where she was living, and she forgot her identity card in the house. So when the police looked for her in identity card, she had the card that she was immunized for COVID. And then they went back to the diaconi and the diaconi looked at that card and they knew I was the one who brought that woman. The police was calling me so that even as volunteers, we are scared to help people who don't have papers 
to access the, the services which are there. That is a very challenging time for, for us. It was a challenging time. It's still very that people who live here without papers, when by fall sick, the community is really, really having a, a lot of fears and keeping the people in our houses and feeding them, uh, taking a risk. And um, then we have migration and health, the national wide migration and public health uh, working group coordinated by the federal parliament. Representative discusses forms and cons consequences like, um, let me say that the Deutsche AIDS Hilfe is in Berlin, and we have in every federal state another AIDS health education to, with, with HIV. So some of these things are also decided politically. Even if some extraordinary successful projects like uh, from various providers provide relief at their place of work, there's still a problem. Like um, if I go to the AIDS Hilfe, I, I have to understand the language. I have to be free from all these topics that I've talked about. I have to be free from homophobe. I have to, I have to function in those uh, organizations which are there. So information about health-related services and offers is insufficiently tailored to people of foreign origin. The health office, the Gesundheit Sam, they have papers there with information. Most of them are not translated to in many languages. So when you go there, you can't function with those papers. People need their own, own language translations which they can understand. So language, culture, and legal barriers in the appropriate use of standard care. Some of the things are really there, but you can't access them in the, the way they are, the way you're supposed to, to access them. Inadequate intercultural expertise on the part of the specialist staff causes barriers to health facilities and may lead to chronic illnesses and it's expensive. We thank uh, the judge because they do intercultural trainings for many of the social workers that they have learned in time how to work with migrants. And also we have the participation of many migrants in the, in the AIDS community, which is not yet enough, but big change compared to some 20 years ago. So despite their large population, migrants are rarely taken into account in health reporting and planning. When they are pl doing plans, we are not part of the plans. But to, up to, to apply the medication, you need to be in the plan, in the researches that also our different, our being different in, from, from the time of the researches. So there is a lot of bureaucracy in the health system. Uh, if you, are, if you are sick in Uganda, you go to the doctor. Here you have the eye doctor, you have the mouth doctor, you have the nose doctor, you have the hand doctor. Every part of your body somehow has, a, has an extra place to go. And this makes it also very hard for some people. People who don't have papers have to go to the social office to get a paper filled for them so that they can use it to go to the doctors so that the doctors can get their money later from the insurance, which is also a very long. And many doctors don't take these papers. So sometimes we have pregnant women, pregnant HIV positive women, and we have to get that paper. It's, it's called Beshainigung from the social workers. And then it takes three months. It's as long as your visa. If your visa is two weeks, you get it every two weeks. If your visa is three months, you renew it every three months. So a pregnancy takes nine months. This nine months, you have to extend that paper for more than three times. And that's also a big challenge that people cannot go to the doctors when they are sick. They have to go through that the, the, uh, bureaucracy. It's hard for the social workers. It's hard for the doctors. It's also hard for the clients. So, and then I would like to also talk about how can migrants be reached with all these barriers? Can we reach them? Um, there is a, a, the best way which I can talk about, which I've also experienced because migrant organizations for over 15, 16 years. Through collaboration with migrant organizations, because migrant organizations are important actors in the civil society, and through their special access from form a bridge to other migrants, with their work in serious area, various areas of society, they make a significant contribution to the integration of people, regardless of whether they have lived here for a long time or just around. It is very important to join to develop and implement measures to reduce access barriers to healthcare. That is, um, I wrote it in German called Fanetsum, Fanetsum to network. So we people who are having migrant organizations, for example, they talked about, 
we are in the whole of Germany and we have access to the people, we have access to the pastors. So to make the health system work, especially in the areas of eradicating HIV in African communities or migrant communities, we need to work with those organizations to look at them at the same level and respect their work so that we can prevent all. Because if HIV is treated one way of the, uh, the community and other part is not treated, we cannot eradicate the, the epidemic. So by considering and solving language problems, by breaking tabloid education and awareness in the community, by offering counseling in general, not exclusively related to HIV, because I see when when I come and talk about my, my health in the church, then we don't have a problem. But when I register for HIV, then I don't see the people. So people come for the health program. We talk about general health, high blood pressure and diabetes, and all these stars and the, th the sicknesses which are accepted, and HIV is just a part of the other sicknesses, then we can reach the ears of the people when we're talking about HIV. So consider that the HIV infection is, is not the main problem because when people are having access to medication, they still have their families, they still have their education papers which are not recognized, they still have racism in their neighborhood, they still have a lot so that when we have to reach as a, as a service provider, we are reaching a person, we try to reach the person as a whole. So by promoting organizations of those are affected and infected, there are some people who are HIV positive and others and their families, that we give them access to organize themselves and be having structures which work for them. Sometimes our structures are not, um, are not easy to use. And then uh, by promoting organizations, also educating the service providers. Service providers are um, German socialized, need to learn also about other people. How are the cultures in Asia? How are the cultures in different African continents? How are the diversities in Africa, 52 or 55 uh, uh, countries with uh, so many languages that we also get education? What do they think about having children, for example? when we are trying to, uh, to, to help them. How, what do we think? What do they think about having their children or feeding? We have as service providers to know a lot and uh, allow ourselves to be educated. Also, we offer awareness against racism and discrimination because not, not, not everybody is free. Some people are reproducing uh, racism and knowing it so that we are creating awareness in our communities and having a healthier life and supporting the HIV positive people, getting their medication and living a healthy life. Fulfilling the goals of 2030, the eradication of HIV and getting everybody having a U equals U so that we don't have new infections in our society. So thank you very much. Um,